All right, let's take a look at problem three. Uh, so problem three is another fun one um, and actually an old exam question. Um, so your friend suggests that the biggest cause for deviations from the ideal gas equation of state is a result of the fact that molecules occupy space. Your friend therefore proposes use of the following equation of state, P is equal to RT divided by V minus B. So essentially it's our you know ideal gas equation of state, P equals RT over V, but now um, instead of V, we're placing it with V minus B, um, which will give us the free volume. So B is going to be the volume occupied by a single molecule. V is the molar volume. So V minus B is essentially the free molecule or free volume um, available to the molecules in our system. Um, and so the question is, using this equation of state, is it possible to model vapor liquid equilibrium for a single component system uh, as you did in chapter two? That is, assuming B is known for Given T, could you find PSAT, a vapor liquid coexistence? Explain your answer. All right, and so again, this is another uh, funnel uh, exam problem where the idea was just to kind of uh, get you thinking. Okay, and so if we were to think back to chapter two, chapter two we introduced cubic equations of state. Okay, and so remember what was unique about cubic equations of state is that for a given temperature and pressure, you could get up, you could get more than one. Um, you know, value for V. You could compute more than one uh, value for V. So you could get up to three real roots. Okay. Um, and so basically what makes cubic equations of state unique is that they're able to simultaneously model uh, both your vapor and liquid phase. Okay. Compare that to your ideal gas equation of state, where for a given temperature and pressure, you're going to have a single unique V, right? Um, it's an ideal gas, right? It's it can only, <laughs> there is no such thing as a liquid phase. Okay. Um, and, and so essentially we're, we're trying to apply the, the same principles here. Um, so first, uh, conceptually, okay? So conceptually, I know that liquids form and exist um, due to strong, favorable intermolecular interactions, right? So when we've already talked about things like enthalpy of vaporization, uh, the enthalpy of my vapor phase is greater than that of, of my liquid, right? In a liquid phase, I know my molecules are all going to be relatively close together uh, and interacting very strongly. So the fact that we get condensed phases uh, is due to the fact that molecules are interacting with each other um, strongly, right? They're strongly interacting, okay, relatively speaking. So if I'm assuming here that the molecules are just taking up space and not interacting, well, then I don't expect it to be able to model vapor liquid coexistence because I don't expect it to be able to model a liquid phase in which I know that my molecules will be interacting, okay? Um, so intuitively, I, I would say no, right? And then to, to take it a step further, okay, you know, if we contrast this again to our cubic equations of state in which we can simultaneously model uh, vapor and liquid phases, so for given temperature and pressure, you can get more than one real Z or V, all right, you can, for given T and P, you can get molar volume for the liquid and vapor phase simultaneously, um, we'll find that you don't, you know, you can't do that here, right? And so uh, basically, so if I P is our T over V minus B, okay, uh, and I wanted to say solve for, for V, okay, I could write this as B, P times V minus B is equal to R T, okay, so P V minus B P is equal to RT. So PV is equal to RT plus BP. Okay, or finally, you know, V is going to be equal to RT over P plus B. All right, and this is kind of cool. RT over P, this would be a uh, molar volume of an ideal gas um, plus um, B, right? B being this actual space or the physical size, um, space occupied by, um, you know, a single molecule. So what I find here is I get an equation, if I solve and get an equation explicit in V, I find that for a given temperature and pressure, okay, B is just a constant, R is just a constant, for a given temperature and pressure, I'm only going to solve for uh, a given V, okay? So the fact that I can't um, get more than one unique V uh, tells me I'm not going to be able to simultaneously model uh, liquid and vapor phase. Okay, um, so no, this you know equation state isn't going to be capable of modeling vapor liquid coexistence. Um, issue being is that you know when I solve for v, 
uh, I see that for given temperature and pressure, I can only get a single unique V value. So I can't simultaneously model liquid and vapor phases. Uh, so that's issue one. Um, issue two then was just conceptually um, liquid phases or condensed phases result from uh, strong intermolecular interactions. Okay, so this equation is not capable, capable of modeling vapor-liquid coexistence. What I'm missing are intermolecular interactions um, in order to be able to capture uh, such behavior. All right, there you have it.